The following was transcribed by Ginny Sharp Wilcox, granddaughter of Sard and Obel Basher, daughter of Shirley Basher Sharp Baker. Source, Valley Life News, January 1942 by K.W. Smith. From Camp to Mansion, the pioneering spirit of a state patrolman and family beget home and finally stocked farm. Most of us have inherited from our not so far removed agrarian ancestors an occasional longing for the wide open spaces. Now especially in this tumultuous time of world unrest, we often feel an urge to go back to the farm, where nearness to the simplicity of nature makes life seem less complicated where the serenity of growing things can soothe nerves battered by the machine age. But we have to make a living, and few have what it takes to overcome the obstacles between our desk at the office, or bench at the shop, and ownership of a country estate. Mr. and Mrs. J. Sard Basher and their youngsters, Shirley 17 and Merle 16, are gifted with the genuine pioneering spirit that created these United States. The result is a farm at 12008 East Trail, Kegel Canyon, where over a thousand chickens, 200 turkeys, two cows, three calves, 36 pigs, geese, ducks, rabbits, and bees, guarded by four dogs, all together in modern pens in a huge barnyard adjacent to an orchard of citrus, walnut, apricot, olive, and other fruit trees. Mr. Basher, employed by the State Police Department, works at his job in Los Angeles five full days a week. But when he and his family decided to have a farm in San Fernando Valley, the procedure in their case was simple. They merely disposed of their comfortable urban home and proceeded to pitch camp on a rocky hillside beneath the Midsummer Valley sunshine. Once upon a time, the site had been occupied by a cobblestone mansion, but a fire had left standing only the gigantic fireplace with its chimney and living room foundation. To this location, the Bashers lived in a one-room cabin, once occupied by the caretaker of the grounds. In this, they lived for months without electricity, plumbing, or gas, the comforts indispensable to the most of us. Out of some old porch screens, Mrs. Basher constructed a kitchen. Livestock consisted of 20 baby chicks. Far cry from the hundreds of barred Plymouth Rocks, Rhode Island Reds, and White Leghorns now housed up in up-to-date brooders and pens. With winter approaching, courage ebbed slightly. There was talk of going back to town for the school year. But it was only talk. Let's not give up yet, Mr. Basher urged. So they stayed. Merle and Shirley entered San Fernando High School, where he is now a sophomore and she is a junior. Both are prominent in school activities. Shirley is an A student, is an ardent member of the Girl Scouts, and carries the banner for the school band. When the band becomes a school orchestra, she and Merle are found to be playing bass, viola, and a piano. Merle is a boy scout and goes in for fishing, hiking, and camping. During all of this, the farm was growing. The Bashers had begun to build a home. A young student of architecture drew plans for a gracious home with huge gothic windows facing the mountains in the rear of the house. From every direction, the Bashers now enjoy a spectacular view. The house is perched on a promontory overlooking the extensive orange groves of the Cecil B. DeMille Ranch. Hanson Dam in front of its sparkling lake and beyond that, the Valley Cities. Burbank, Roscoe, San Fernando, North Hollywood, and Van Nuys 
arrayed at night in the countless twinkling lights. The ruins of the former home on the property would be, will be made into a large patio. The enormous fireplace utilizes as a barbecue. The bashers intended to have a swimming pool. All in all, an $8,000 home when completed. But it won't cost them near that much unless you count hours of time and buckets of sweat in terms of money. To date, not over $1,500 in actual cash has been spent. The bashers are cleverly building the house out of scrap material by themselves. All the labor, carpenting, wiring, pouring of concrete, and plastering. Every extra cent has gone into the purchase of livestock. The turkeys, which Mrs. Basher sells the year round, are her particular pride and joy. Shirley cares for the rabbits and Merle feeds the pigs. Almost a year ago, the Basher youngsters decide they would like to see an auction sale, since it would be a new experience for them. The family piled into the car and took off for Ontario, where they heard one was being held. A fetching, weak old calf inspired Merle to bid a dollar. Before he knew it, the calf was his for two fifty. The poor little thing, how lonesome he will be, sighed Mrs. Basher. That night, they found themselves bound for home, two baby calves and a milk goat to nurse from, all packed into the rumble seat for an eighty-mile ride. The farm keeps growing and expanding over its 17 and a half city lots, which is 22 acres. Mr. Basher tends to his job in the major part of the farm labor. Mrs. Basher takes care of her household duties, just more than her share of meeting the demands of the poultry business, manages the family finances, helps with Shirley's Girl Scout troop, aids in the carpentry, and cans fruit which she stores in the cellar, itself an unusual feature for a California home. Shirley and Merle cheerfully go about their chores. Seldom is there an idle moment for the Basher household, but they all find such joy in their daily tasks and taking inspiration from the beautiful view of the San Fernando Valley, there could not be a more appropriate name for their home than Happy Hill Farm.